going to uh, open up on the last page of this book, Laws of the Festivals, on the last page. The, about the altar? It's about the six days following Shavuot. It's on page 242. Uh, well, in, uh, two, two, three. Ah. No, no, we don't have to learn about him today. <laughs> Page 242. Oh, good morning, Ariel. All right, so number 15. The six days following Shavuot. Israel, can you read or is it too hard for you? Can you read the English? You want to read for us out loud? Will you read? Here, you got it. 242. That's right, over here. Okay. Section 15. Yeah. When the temple said so, there was a mitzvah to make a pilgrimage. It had a year's once of the huge fantastic and to offer an ola and serving on the first day of the festival, the offering were referred to as Ola Vinya and Shamim. Okay, there's two types of, of uh, offerings. One is called an ola and one is a shlamim. What's an ola? Ola is elevation. Oh, right. And how is it different than a shlamim? It's complete. Ola is, uh, yeah. Yeah, but how, how is that different? Because um, the other one is uh, you, you keep some of it. Oh, good, good, and good, good. Um, what do you mean you keep? You ola it all burned. Good. Ola is totally burnt up. Right. It all goes up on the fire. Shlamim. Shlamim, there's a portion for the Kohanim. There's also a portion for the owner. So you get to eat some meat. You bring the part of the Korban to Hashem, but part is for the Kohanim and part is for you. Very big dinner, of course. That's right, a barbecue. Yeah. Nice. If, if, well, in the well, the, the the kohanim had to eat in the temple, but your part, oh, your you part. could take it home. You could, oh. I mean, home. Uh, maybe in Jerusalem, you were staying in Jerusalem. You're coming up. Do you do it outside Jerusalem? Take it out? No. Uh, no, you're not allowed to leave Jerusalem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Within the within the the walls, right? Yeah. Olat uh, Riya. What does Riya mean? Lirot. Taroelti and Niroeltha. What's Lirot? Reiya. What's Reiya? Lirot. Aniroeltha. Taroelti to see. So Olat Riya, what's what's to see? There's a mitzvah to see and be seen. You go up to the temple, who sees you? Hashem. Hashem. And you come to see God. You come to see Hashem. So that's the korban on every of the three festivals. You go up to see Hashem. And you bring an ola. Ola te So that's one thing you do. Just the very fact that you come to see Hashem and to be seen. And shalmei chagiga. Chagiga, what does that mean? What's a chag? Chag sameach. Also, chagiga is a, is a celebration. So that you bring the shalamim. It's a festival of celebration, like Ariel said, that comes from the word shalom. Peace, because there's peace, because everybody gets a portion. Hashem has some part of the korban. The kohanim get a portion, and the owners have a portion, and they get to eat. So everybody's happy. It's, a, it's, a, it's an offering which makes peace among all of the parties. Okay? So every Jew who came to Jerusalem had to bring two types of offerings. An ola, called an olat re'iya, and the Shlamim, called Shalmei Chagiga. Okay, so there's two types. Now, if somebody had a very, very big family, which would he bring more? The Ola or the Shlamim? Shlamim. 
Shlamim, so he'd have more meat to feed his family. You know, somebody in a very small family, it's just maybe him and his wife. You know, come to Yerushalayim. The Ola is bigger and the Shlamim was small. That's right. That's it, according to the needs of the family. You can invite other people. You can, you can. It's not like Pesach. Pesach is unique where you have to have a set group. Here you can invite other people to join you. But in any case, um, so when would they bring that? On the first day of the festival, he says. One, I'm continuing to read, one who did not offer them on the first day, why would he not? You came to Jerusalem, why would you not put on your, your um, sacrifice on the first day? Full of yeah, too many people. Can you imagine? Did you did you go to the Kotel on Shavuot? I didn't go to the group, but I, was, I didn't make it with the whole group. But I was there when did you go? During the day. During the day. In the daytime you yeah, went. Yeah, uh, 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 so it was the end of. Uh, uh, oh, at the beginning of Chag. Yeah, it was the end of Chag. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh-huh. It's. Uh, I can't go. You should go on the Yom Kippur. Yom Kippur. <laughs> sure, a lot of people. Even yeah, the month well, before Yom Kippur, there's pictures. a lot of people. Yeah. I, I went. Mm-hmm. I, I, I don't remember the way it Yeah. Just oh, shalom. Yeah, yeah. But I went, I went there, it was like a very proud. It was like a, <laughs> unbelievable. Month before, for... Yeah, 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 yeah. So last oh, wow. night, uh, I beat the crowds. I went, not last night, the night before last. Ravid, you you uh, you were here for Chag, yeah, well, Kirat Ono. I've been in Kirat So you just came back now. Yes. Woo! Long travel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Welcome. Good. Hello. Good. Anyways, so yeah, they're building a new uh, cable car. They're planning to build a cable car. So three thousand people from from the Tachana Rishona, from where the old train station was, all the way straight to the Kotel. So people can get there easily. And so quickly. it's going to go this way, like instead of uh, off Yako, it's going mm-hmm. east. Yeah, it'll go. Uh, it'll go east. Yeah. No, like uh, in the air. In the air. Yeah, hung, hung in the air. Yeah, like they have in Haifa. In Haifa, they have a cable car, right? So they're going to do that in the old city. <laughs> so here it's to the Kotel. It'll be high up, yeah. It'll be high up. On the side where... Over on... There's a side that's pretty elevated and you can go down. If you look down, it's pretty elevated. I think they want to design it like that. Like the Kotel is like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe they'll extend it to Harazetim one day, but now they're going from uh, from the old uh, station, the first station it's called, all the way to the Kotel. Amazing. Through Hartzion... Uh, I'll, you'll be uh, traveling on top of the valley of Hinom. You know what I'm talking about? Gaibin Hinom, where they, they have concerts sometimes. Anyways, the cable car will bring 3,000 people every hour. <laughs> so you can imagine. Yeah, you can picture it. It's like going around. I had the map here the other day, but I didn't bring it. I didn't leave it here. But, uh, well, yeah. It's not the same. It's very mm-hmm. inimitable like, to make from the Hanadish uh, nice straight to the quarter, so you need to go... You'd go around the, the old city, yeah. near Hartzion, around Hartzion. Anyways, Bezot Hashem. Anyways, going back to Shavuot, um, Israel, pass uh, Ravid a, uh, a book, please. The book, you can oh. answer. Okay. So we were saying that... <laughs> <laughs> Did I say it right? Thank you, Sheshe. <laughs> so, the person who wanted to come to Yerushalayim for Chag, he had two goats. One is an Ola, Ola Tri'ya, and one is a Shlamim, Shalmi Chagiga. So, he brings his goats to the Beta Mikdash. And it's too full. Too many people. He couldn't bring it the first day. So what did he do? He tried the second day. You know what happened? Also too full. Third day, too full. 
How, how many days is, is uh, Shavuot? It's only one day. <laughs> Pesach is seven days. You could be finished. <laughs> Sukkot, seven days. Oh, it's not the first day, the second day, the third day. But on Shavuot, there's only one day. So how's that, what's with everybody's korbanot, everybody's sacrifices? So let's read what he says here. One did not offer them on the first day, page 242, could fulfill his obligation to do so through the conclusion of the festival, meaning the seventh day of Pesach, or until Shemina Atzeret. That's, that's on Pesach or Sukkot. But one who did not offer them on Shavuot could offer them in the following six days. Just as one had seven days to bring Olad Shlamim for Pesach, so too one had a week to bring them for Shavuot. So today is not Shavuot anymore. It's only one day. But in the temple times, there were six special days after Shavuot where you could finish up. If someone didn't manage to bring the sacrifice of the festival, on the first day, you could do it for six more days. So, in a way, the festival does continue for another six more days. You understand what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, in uh, this period of time, they had only one mizbeach? Of course, of course. So they only one. Like no, 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 no. Like You're not allowed. doing together in the same time. Only one Mizbech. There's lots of Kohanim, but only one Mizbech. So they, they couldn't do it all in one day, so they did it for seven days. But the six days afterwards, it's weird, because it's not a festival anymore. Everybody's going to work, yeah. and you're bringing your korban of Shavuot. You're still having cheesecake. Can you imagine? <laughs> Shavuot's over. <laughs> I, I think it looks like a barbecue in Brazil, like the never stops. Never stops. That's it. <laughs> okay. Okay. Renan, read uh, the next paragraph. Since. Since the festival sacrifice may be offered during the six days following the and the event of festival joint continues as well. Therefore, the person is not to say Tachanon during the day. Did you say Tachanon this morning? I understand, but you still have to pray. Yeah, you still have to. Okay, yeah. after class you'll do it. Yeah. But uh, make sure when you pray late, you have to do some basics yeah. before yeah. the time. You have to say the Shema before the time passes. And also, you have to say Bilkot Torah before we study Torah. You have to say the blessings on the Torah. It's if you didn't, take the Siddur right now. It's not valid from yesterday? No, uh, if you didn't sleep, some say it's valid. Oh, yeah, some people say that. <laughs> but the custom is that we say, recite it in the morning, even. Blessings, no page, uh, page 10. Page 10 and 11, you should do right away before we continue studying. But... Uh, that's always important before our class, at least. You should really get up and, uh, and daven, but I know you have a special situation. But at least you should say Shema, so that the time doesn't pass, and you should say the blessings over the Torah before class. We're learning Torah, after all. You're not allowed to learn Torah without saying a blessing first. Okay? Um, let's continue. Shabbat, they would offer the next day. 
and they will with certified operators consider a day of SIM card. Therefore, one may not pass them. So really, so the day he brings the, the offering, he can't pass on the day. That's right. Right. So all of us have a, the, the the day after Shavuot today. It's called Isru Chag. Isru Chag. The day after Chag. Yeah. The day after Chag. It, it comes it really the word Leesor means to tie, to bind, to bind up. So this day is bound up to the festival because it was quite common that they would bring the sacrifices instead of the day if it can happen on Shabbat. Then you would bring it on the next day. So the next day is really uh, has an element of festivity to it. I have a question. And then the other five days, in addition, only after Shavuot. Only after Shavuot because it's only one day, not seven days. So then we have a whole six days that you don't say Tachnu. And we don't say Tachnu for six days after Shavuot. But the first day after the festival, it's also true after after Shmini Atzeret, after the seventh day of Pesach, one day extra. They always had, we don't say Tachnu on the day of Yisru Chag. Mm -hmm. Now here, this everybody in Israel, even if they're not religious, they've heard of this concept. Why? The day after, the concept called Yisru Chag, the, the day that's tied up to the Chag, the day after. Why have they heard about this? Because the teachers' union is very strong, and they demanded a holiday on Isru Chag. So this is like a, a day off. So it's a day off. All the schools don't start no. until a day a day later. It's uh, yeah. If you're a kid, you're happy. You get an extra day off. But if you if you if your parents need to go to work, what are you going to do with your kids? There's no school. So, but the people know about it, even if they're secular, because the kids get a day off school because of Isru Chag. Isru Chag means it's sort of the day after the festival, and that's also a little bit festive. In the time, it goes back to temple times, because it was the day where many of the sacrifices that were not brought on the day of the festival were brought the day afterwards. And what do we do today? Well, the children don't go to school, <laughs> and we don't say tachnun. They, sometimes they come to work, <laughs> whatever they do, but the main thing is we don't say tachnun. And, and in this, in our festival, Shavuot, we don't say tachnun for six days after. after. Uh, you came in just after the paragraph which explained that uh, many people needed time to bring their sacrifices and Shavuot, there's only one day. So not everybody could bring their sacrifices. There's six days longer where people would bring the sacrifices of the Shavuot holiday that they brought up to Jerusalem. And that's why we don't say Tachnon for six days. So we could say that the festivities continue a little bit. You're allowed to eat cheesecake for another six days. Okay? But why do you only have Shavuot for one day in Israel and outside Israel we have two days? Why oh, that's a good question. That's that's another element that in Chutzlar, it's uh, all the festivals, the custom developed that instead of one day, they have two days, right? Instead of... Uh, it take longer for them to have uh, information received. Right, good, good, good. Because this custom developed because they were far away and they didn't have SMS. <laughs> fax machines. They didn't have the communications that we had and they were not sure of the calendar. In the day they didn't have a calendar on paper. It was all based on eyewitnesses who saw the new moon and it took a while for them to get from Jerusalem where the court would declare today is Rosh Chodesh all the way to, I don't know, London. <laughs> Wherever they were outside the land of Israel so when they came to the 15th of the month, they didn't know for sure which day is it. Is it the 14th? Is it the 15th? Is it the 15th? And so they kept two days. It's also because there's like a time difference. And like, so it lines up in a sense. Uh, so yeah. I don't know. Just, uh, That's another calculation is that, you know, how do we do in the global world when yeah. the time... But that's, that's a, not why, why we keep two days. That's why, that's a question of, you know, when does the day start? Yeah. When you're in a different time zone. So when they're 
because the sun rises and sets, uh, perhaps almost, you know, uh, uh, not synchronized with the land of Israel. But that's a separate question. That's not uh, the reason. It's a kind of punishment because you are in Jagaluk. That's of course, yeah, that's true. Some people like it, but you're right. It can be very difficult to have. So the people from Chutzlar, it's they'll, they're separated the second day, and but they'll have the next day, after two days of Shavuot, then the next day will be their Isru Chag. But there, they don't have a teacher's union, <laughs> which gets them off school. So they have to go straight from the second day of Shavuot back to school. Yes, sir. Uh, just imagine, uh, today in the morning, Let's say seven o'clock, six o'clock. Yeah. Uh, I need to go to a uh, European country. Yes. So it's when I arrive there, it's the second day of Shavuot. Correct. Correct. How do I need to behave? It's a good question. It's a good question. It's quite a problem, really, because when you go uh, to a Jewish community, you're supposed to respect their customs the and and keep the Shabbat. Or Shabbat, you know, it usually doesn't work that way. But for Yom Tov, they have an extra day. So you're not really allowed to violate the Yom Tov really? in their well, presence. What most people suggest is that you wait an extra day and don't fly to Europe on the second day of Yom Tov for them. Or if you do fly, you stay in the airport. Sure. The airport is like a no man's land. It's like a, it's, if there's no Jewish community there, then you are an Israeli. You don't, it's, not, it's not the festival for you. It's only when you enter a Jewish community sure. that is celebrating the, the Chag, you have to join that community. And so it's a problem traveling. I will have a problem when I'm going to Amsterdam today and enter the, 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 the building of uh, Chabad with my telephone. Uh, Big problem, that's, that's right. <laughs> that's not. <laughs> so I could stay it's the, improper, right? Yeah. In it's not, it's so it's, it's, it's a question how to define exactly, you know, so I said the airport, because that's clear, you're not, yeah. there's no Jewish community in the airport. Once you leave the community, well, no. Uh, once you leave the airport, I mean, you know, what's... You go to a place, let's say you go to a place where there's no Jewish community. Like, yeah. You go out of the city. Right, so then, right. I, then I think that's fine. Yeah, yeah. That's not fine. If there's no Jews there, there's no, there's no prohibition. A hotel? Like, so a hotel. So the question is, how close is the hotel, uh, you know, to the Jewish community? You know, so I'm saying hotels, so many times they're Jews that come to the hotel from where they live, you know. So they're, if, they're, if there are a lot of Jews there, then it's a problem. Um... So we need to aware when we are going uh, on no, no, these no. holidays sure. where, uh, outside this world. You have to don't be. Go. That's right. <laughs> yeah, go. that's right. You should wait one more day. That's right. You should not not travel to to uh, yeah. on the second day, even though here we we have a regular day. Yeah. Here, we, you might want your kids are off school. You might want to take them, <laughs> but uh, you can't take them to Chutzlaret because there they're celebrating the second day of Yalta, where you're not allowed to travel. To, and to talk on your phone, like your Aviv was saying. Yes, Ariel. I have a question for the last lady. Yeah. And this covered on the room. Are you allowed to greet before the Chag? No. 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 There is a question about the, the day before. Okay. Like, um, for example, the, the famous question is Pesach. Mm-hmm. On Pesach, what do we eat? Uh, in the temple times, what did we eat at the night of the Seder, right? The first night of Pesach. Uh, the, the what do we eat? Lamb. The lamb. Of what? Of the Korban Pesach, right? But we don't have a Korban Pesach anymore, so we put a, a roasted yeah. shank bone on the plate, right? What else do we have on the plate? An egg. An, uh, an egg. Why is there an egg? It symbolizes our, like, yolk. Nope. Nope. No. The egg is to commemorate the Korban Chagiga, the Shalmei Chagiga, because there's a, even a halacha that says you're only supposed to eat the uh, Korban Pesach when you're full. When you're full. What are you full with? You're full with the rest of the meal. What's the rest of the meal? Well, there's matzah, but there's also going to be meat. Which meat? The meat of your korban shlamim, your shalmei chagiga. So that indicates, Ariel, that they would bring the korban chagiga on the day before Pesach, so yeah. that that yeah. night exactly. they'd be able to have two types of meat: yeah. the meat of the shlamim, the shalmei chagiga, and then when they're finished, when they're full, for dessert, 
you had a, uh, uh, an olive size of Korban Pesach. Yeah, so I'm saying they, they don't like slaughter it before, but you just bring the animal. So, no, they would. They have to slaughter it if you want to eat it at night. So, so that was the. Uh, like, well, your animal for the night, no? No, 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 yeah, no, no. You slaughtered it in the temple. You couldn't slaughter it outside the temple. So it had to be brought onto the altar. And uh, so that's um, the, the, the day before the festival. Sounds like it was kosher for the uh, Shlamim. For the Shlamim. The Olat really, I don't think so. The Olat, the Olat, you had to wait for the next day. So you had a good question, Ariel. It's quite interesting. The, 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 the yeah, good well, morning. Right. <laughs> one day, right. Why is it only one day? Who can answer me that? Well, Shavuot, actually, it's 50 days. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> it's not 50, 50 days, but it's the 50th day. So we have on Sukkot, right? Sukkot, right? We have... Um, Seven days. Seven days, right, from the 15th to the 21st. And then we have the eighth day is on the 22nd. Is, it's called Shemini, which means Shmone, right? Shemini. Atzeret. Pesach. And we said that the, it's, a, it's a half a year, right? Sukkot is the beginning of uh, six months from Tishrei. And then Nisan is the, the other half of the year. Six months later, we Pesach. Okay? And it's also seven days. From the 15th to the 21st. Correct? Seven days. And then, do we have Shmini Atzeret? No. What do we have here? Another seven days, and another seven days, another seven days, another seven days, another seven, 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 seven. How many sevens have I done? Seven. Seven. One, two, three, four, five, six. Right? Seven. After seven weeks, then we have Shavuot. Shavuot. It's already the sixth of Sivan. Here we have a festival called Shavuot. What's the festival called in the rabbinic uh, writings? It's called Atzeret. You see that? Atzeret. 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 Like Shmini Atzeret. This is Atzeret also. But it's not after seven days. It's after seven weeks. So... That's what Renan was saying, that really Shavuot, it's not its own festival that stands by itself. It's the continuation of Pesach. It's the Atzeret of Sukkot and the Atzeret of Pesach. It's really, there's only two festivals, not three. Right? Festival of Sukkot, the festival of Pesach. They each one have an ending. This is one ending, and this is one ending. You understand? Atzeret, we had it just before, it means to stop. Ato. Ato, right? And stop. So what do you stop? You stop the festival. You stop, uh, well, you also stop yourself from going back to the regular life. And you, um, you uh, have one more day. After the week, you have one more day of festival with Hashem, and then you go back to the regular life. And what we're learning now is that after, after, the day after, there's plus one. <laughs> plus one is, we call it Isru Chag. It's the day which is tied up. Isru means to tied up. It's tied up to the festival. And <laughs> it's because in the temple time, many times they would bring the sacrifices one more day. And 
we have the Isru Chag at the end of every festival. Isru Chag here and Isru Chag, the plus one. The plus one, that's today, right? And then we said Shavuot because actually it's considered to be the third, a separate Sukkot, Pesach, and Shavuot is the third Olela Rege. We have the mitzvah to bring more korbanot. Al Olot Re'iya and Shalmei Chagiga. And so we need more than one day. We need plus six instead of plus one. And as we have the six days, um, there's no name for them really. It's just the days which we don't uh, say Tachnon because they could actually continue to bring the sacrifices in the temple for the six days after Shavuot. So it's still a little festive. You understand now better? Right, right. It's interesting that we, the, the Judaism was formed with the temple as the center. But you're right that if you didn't go to the Beit HaMikdash, you wouldn't need an extra day or an extra six days. <laughs> but uh, we, uh, the Torah was designed, planned to be that all the Jewish people come three times a year. Pesach, Sukkot, and Shavuot come to the temple. And so uh, it's a special day, even though you're right, we don't, not everybody went to the temple every holiday. And uh, nowadays we don't have a temple at all. Now that's what I was saying before, it's just because there's a strong teachers union. <laughs> Other than that, there's no reason to have Isru Chag or, you know, off and not have it as a holiday anymore. And the six days really, you know, we don't have any sacrifices. So, so every holiday has this, like, uh, uh, Isru Chag, yeah, yeah, yeah. All the biblical holidays. Right, yeah. right? Uh, Pesach, Shavuot, and Sukkot, where there was Korbanot, where exactly, where there was Olotri and Shomi Chagiga, because it took a while, yeah. Uh, 22 of, yeah, no, Here, it's not a holiday. It's, it's not, not a holiday. It is an Isru Chag also. Oh, okay. It's also Isru Chag. There is there's an Isru Chag here too. The, there's a plus one. It's a little bit festive. The, the first day of uh, Well, no, Sefirat almost starts over here. Oh, uh, over yeah. here. But, uh, there, you know, so. Yeah. And there is an Isru Chag there. Here, of course, it's a Cholom Moed. Here it is the holiday anyways. Yeah. Could I ask something else about Sure. The last two days I'm thinking about this and I still don't have an answer. Now we receive the, the Torah, the Roland Torah. Now we have this period of the 120 days. Right. Uh, so, of course, we know I think <coughs> First time Moshe is going up to the mountain to receive the Torah. He's coming back. You see the eagle. He broke the, the tablets. Good. He's going back to say, oh, I like to say sorry. Then the it's good you know. It's good you know. Yeah, yeah, you're but, remembering it. Yeah, but. What, what I'm thinking, when yes. he's going for 40 days, how much time he really have been up? In another way, how long, how many days it took to go up? How many days it took to come down? So how many days you really have been uh, up uh, talking to Hashem to receive the Torah? So the Torah, the, the, the Midrash says as follows. Moshe studied the whole Torah when he was on Sinai. And he would forget. He's only human. So God would teach him the Torah again. <laughs> and then he would forget again. And Moshe would study the whole Torah again from Hashem, and then he would forget. And Moshe said, ah, it's not working. I don't know what to do. They want, what's my name? Moshe Rabbeinu. I'm supposed to be the rabbi. I don't know anything. I, don't, I can't remember anything. My head, it won't go in. And Hashem says to him, I'll give it to you as a gift. Not that you can understand it with your own mind, and you can, but Hashem gave it to him as a gift. 
And he tried for 40 days. What does this mean? Do you really think Moshe could learn all of the Torah in 40 days? I'm trying my whole life, 40 years, and more, to study Torah. I don't understand it all. I find I'm not Moshe, but the greatest rabbis in the world, they study their whole lives. They can't know everything. can't know all of Torah. So what does it mean? It means that... Uh, and what's 40 days? 40 days, is that possible? It's like what we said the other day about the Beit HaMikdash. Moshe, Shlomo built a, 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 a temple, and he prays at the beginning, and he says, I know that you, Hashem, fill the heavens and the earth. Well, how can you fit into a building? <laughs> you can't fit. It's impossible. So we said that, but let this temple be... What does it mean that it's your house? That whenever people pray to you, they'll pray to you to this house. And you will answer their prayers. In other words, this temple will be like a pipeline for all the prayers. I want to answer you the same thing about uh, the Torah that uh, Moshe received. Moshe became the pipeline for the Torah. Can Moshe really know all of the Torah himself? He's the pipeline. The Torah was projected to us through Moshe. Remember the picture I sent you of the sunlight causing a shadow? Moshe was, was creating the shadow, Moshe with the, with the tablets. Remember that picture? Remember? Remember, I, I might have it here somewhere. I don't know. But... Uh, is it a cloud mountain? You can see the shadow of Moshe? I might have it. Is it the group? Uh, we had it in class here. Yeah, it's a picture actually on the group chat. Is it uh, on the group chat? Here. Here, this picture. Remember this? <laughs> oh, right. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The sun shining through. Yeah. And Moshe is standing here, and it creates a shade yeah. of the Torah. Yes. So the Torah comes to us through Moshe Rabbeinu. Can Moshe Rabbeinu know, grasp all of Torah? It's impossible. So whether it was a long way up the mountain or a short way up the mountain, I don't know. I don't know that it's uh, important. What's important is that 40 days is a transformation. Moshe was transformed into this pipeline for God's word to come to us. Yesterday on Shavuot, we, we were all the pipeline. We all had revelation, right? All the Jews stood on Mount Sinai and heard the word of God. But after that, the people said, we're going to die. We're going to die. We can't keep this up. <laughs> Not every day can we stay up all night. Could you stay up even one night <laughs> and, and uh, receive the Torah? Falling asleep. Falling... <laughs> it's impossible. And so Hashem said, I'm giving it to Moshe in 40 days. What that means is that it's a new world. There is the Word of God in, in this world through the Torah, through Moshe. And that's why the details of, you know, how many steps Moshe walked up the mountain and did it take him a half a day or a day and a half to walk further up the mountain. That's really misunderstanding the point that the Torah is telling us that Moshe stayed on the mountain. I don't know where, where did he stay? Was there a hotel on top of the mountain? <laughs> he didn't eat and he didn't drink for 40 days. I guess there was no dining room. service. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know whether he got there after an hour or two hours. Did they have showers? Did they have a swimming pool? I don't know what the hotel was like. Actually, yeah. his clothes he, he left uh, the people going up to uh, yeah. today. Um, because we are yeah, 40 right. days. 40 days so from, the, today. from the day after the, 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 the revelation. I, I just uh, tried to... to, to <laughs> 
come inside of the Jewish people. Yeah. And I said, okay, uh, maybe he takes 10 days to go up. Uh, <laughs> yeah, because they don't have so much suffering. This is why they right. So right. we try to count, oh, okay, when he can come back. Right. So the Talmud go, gets into these details and says that there's a tradition that Moshe always went up to the mountain on the beginning of the day, in the morning, morning time. You always, when you go on a tour, you go out early in the morning. Okay? So, Wait, so, so the 40 days actually starts today, you're right. Yeah. And then 40 days later, what ha- what's 40 days afterwards? No, 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 not for these 40 days. He stayed up for 40 days. So in the, in the, in the, in the way, uh, in the days leading up to the 6th of Sivan, in the Torah reading, which we read, it describes the, the conversation between God and Moshe. He says, go tell the people I'm coming, go tell them to prepare, go tell them not to come close to the mountain. It's described a few times that Moshe went up back and forth, up and down the mountain. Uh, tradition tells us that every time he went up, it was, it was always at the beginning of the day. So if the beginning of the day of the 6th of Sivan was the revelation, only the next day, was Moshe going up, and so we count 40 days from the 7th of Siva, which takes us to what day? After 40 days are finished? 7 plus 40 brings us to yeah, but there's no 47 days in a month. Like what, 17th? 17th of Tammuz. The next month is Tammuz. That's Why is it a Tanit? Because Moshe came down with the tablets. And one of them fell as well? No, both of them were, didn't fall. Both of them were broken by Moshe on purpose because he saw them worshipping the golden calf. So that 40 yeah. days later is the 17th of Tammuz. But you're right, we start counting the day after. That's today. So you cannot be up at the top of the mountain for 40 days. Right, I think it went down to the middle because that's where you're I don't know what the middle is, what the top is, what that. No, there is a middle. If he can live for 40 days without eating and drinking, yeah, then he can so instantaneously transport himself to the top of the mountain. Right, right. Okay? He could probably perform miracles. So it was miraculous, this the whole cloud, scene. Like, literally lift him up because there was a cloud around. That's right, there was an elevator, oh, right. a cloud yeah. elevator, yeah. exactly. Yeah. He stepped into the cloud, boom, all of a sudden he was at the top of the He pushed the... <laughs> which floor did he push? Floor number 40? Maybe he had a... <laughs> I don't know what floor it was in the elevator. Maybe, maybe. But wait, wait, wait. There, there was like a middle of the mountain, or there was like sections of the mountain, because there was a True. part where Yeshua right. was... Right, 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 right. But that was yeah, all, so right? That's true. There was some, maybe some stages onto the mountain where, where yeah, Yoshua was know, waiting for. Him. At the very bottom, while Yoshua and Caleb and Spielberg were in. What, uh, what, the, what the floor do you think that was on, Yoshua? I'd say... Floor 10? Floor 5? I don't know. Uh, I'd say 13, maybe. 15, 15 is all. 13, 13 is a good number. Not halfway, but... <laughs> halfway. Maybe, I don't know. So I'm going to count the three different mountains in the Sinai Peninsula. So we don't know which no. where where it is. It's only up to three. So it could why? Who says it's up to three? Yeah, there's many yeah. mountains. Each one could be yeah, that was Sinai. Yeah, we don't. Yeah, but I'm saying if we can actually look at the mountain. We can see how tall it is, or lower ways it could go up. It. We can make approximations, estimates of how long it's. I'll get it's guesswork. It's all guesswork. Yeah, we'll make a range. As I was describing to to Ravi just now, the whole concept though yeah. is not so much a physical. One. Right. The 40 days of Moshe on Sinai was, was spiritual. It was, Moshe was receiving prophecy. He was, he was being transformed. The world was being transformed into a world with Torah. The good thing? Given through Moshe. Yeah. That it's like uh, many mountains, that they can't worship the mountains. Right. That's right. It's it didn't remain important. holy afterwards. It's interesting. So, Only Jerusalem is the holy mountain. Some people yeah. say that. So they, they, they can't go, and they can't go there and make a temple? Or right, right. Yeah. The, if you go to the Egyptians, now it's a Sinai in the Egyptians, you pay money, they'll take you, I'll take you for a tour to Jabal Musa, the mountain of Moses. Mm-hmm. They claim they know it because they want to take your money for, for, the, for the tourism. But we don't know which is the mountain. There is a tradition. Maybe, that, maybe that's right. I don't know. Maybe that was Har Sinai, but I don't know. I don't really know where exactly it was. I have another question. Uh, okay. okay, one second. There's a Pinchas, and then we'll come back to you. Yeah. Uh, in the beginning, uh, the 
همه شب و بود فیرامین اپیکاتیون فیستیون Only, I'd like to believe that it was uh, mixed. There are many themes, many themes, many themes at once. Of course, there was the agriculture, but it started off with, with uh, the revelation at Sinai. So even when they separate, celebrated it as the festival of Bikurim, we spoke about it last week, they also celebrated that it was the day we received the Torah. So there's many layers of the festival. I don't think it's one and then the other. Maybe some people describe it that way, but I think uh, when something is very rich, something is very full with meaning, so all the meanings are true at the same time. It's not just a historical progression, uh, although you might have seen that somewhere. Okay, Ravid, what's your question? Um, after uh, Shabbat, the last Shabbat, Okay. Moti Shabbat. Okay. My wife, she told me before, when the Shabbat is finished, we are starting to have finish our work. Don't expect that I'm talking until Shabbat is finished. Wow. And I tried to have an answer, but we didn't have the time, and I still don't know why she was not talking all the day of Shabbat. Hmm. She said to me, you can talk to me, um, I can move, but I'm not talking. Wow, wow. I don't know the meaning. Well, she should speak to you and explain it to you, but I'll try to help you <laughs> if, if you if you didn't get a chance to talk. But uh, So there is a, uh, a custom. It's based in the Torah that when you want to do tshuva, you want to get closer to Hashem, you should fast. Where is it mentioned in the Torah? You should not eat or drink. Where does it say that in the Torah? Probably one Only one day a year is in the Torah. Don't eat or drink. Yom Kippur. Yom Kippur. So we see the idea of fasting, refraining from doing the regular activities, is part of your religious life. It's to be close to Hashem. We know that over the course of time, the rabbis instituted four more fasts in the days that we remember the destruction of the temple. Also, we have to do tshuva. We have to, yes. we have to get closer to Hashem so we, we don't eat. There's another type of fast which developed in some communities and that is, I want to get close to Hashem, but to not eat and drink, I get weak, I get tired. It's very difficult. So some rabbi said, no, no, no. You only do the one fast biblical and the four rabbinic fasts. Only five days a year do we fast, not eat and drink. But I want to do tshuva. I want to get close to Hashem on another day. So they came up with this idea, we'll have a fast from speaking. Uh, I won't speak for a whole day. Instead of not eating and drinking to get close to Hashem, I will not talk. That's another way of limiting my physical life. And that, it's a method of getting close to Hashem. It was never made an obligation at any day of the year. This is a much later idea doesn't even appear in the, in the Talmud, as far as I'm concerned. I don't know of any precedent in the Talmud. So later in Jewish history, though, some groups, some rabbis came up with this idea, instead of fasting from food, I'll fast from speaking. And that's a method of, of focusing on, on being spiritual and, and uh, doing tshuva, coming close to Hashem. Do we have an expression for this custom? It's called ta'anit. Ta'anit is a fast from food. Yes, this one is ta'anit dibur. Ta'anit dibur is a fast from speech. Ta'anit dibur. Dibur means speech. Okay, thank you so, so much. So some people do that, but it's not an obligation. But some people, they want to be very spiritual. 
She did this for, for on the day of Shavuot? Wow. Most people do it on another day, but because uh, you have some such a such a family time. The day of Shavuot. The truth is, even when you when you most people, most people when you do a ta'anit dibur, this type of fasting from speech, it doesn't mean you can't speak words of Torah. You're allowed to speak words of Torah, and you pray and say Torah all day long, just not mundane speech. You don't speak about the weather. You don't speak about uh, the politics. But to speak about words of Torah, that's allowed. That's not uh, the Tanit Dibu is a custom. Only to, to, to mundane speech, regular, everyday speech. But uh, if you need something that for Torah, for sure you're allowed to speak words of Torah. But anyways, this is, there's no real rules because there's no real mitzvah. There's no, it, it's a custom that some... People do, maybe uh, it's, uh, who made it popular, I'm trying to remember, was it, maybe Hasidi Ashkenaz mentioned this, I'm not sure when in the history the first people where this became very popular, to do a fast from speech, but it's, uh, it's, uh, it's a practice which you, some people choose to take upon themselves, but it's not an obligation. And uh, apparently your wife uh, is very uh, spiritual. She yes, wants to yes. be uh, uh, use this method. Yes. Yeah. I didn't know this, but now I'm very... Thank you so much. <laughs> it doesn't mean she doesn't love you. <laughs> it doesn't mean she doesn't want to talk to you. Believe me, she wants to talk to you probably more. Uh, but uh, she's trying to be very holy. Yes. I tried to, do her, to give her the respect for this, but I didn't know what... what so Whereas, yeah, 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 so yeah, now, yeah. Now. usually you should, she should have explained it to you. Uh, maybe she doesn't, uh, she you know. She wants to ask the rabbi. She wants to ask, okay, that's, she sent him to Mohon Meir. <laughs> so I'm speaking on her behalf, really. Yes, Pinchas. <laughs> so what did you do? What did you do last night, the night before last? What did you do on Motzei Shabbat? Did you do a regular havdalah? Uh, you didn't know what to do? Uh, well, we studied you know, it here. Borei me oreaish. Oreaish, right. Yes. But I didn't light a special candle. I just said the bracha on the Yom Tov candles. Yeah, that no, my wife lit. Like you don't use a special candle, right? You do it. You do kiddush and havdalah at the same time. It's very strange. And we change the regular, the regular ending of the havdalah. The regular text of the havdalah is hamavdil separates ben kodesh lechol. What did we say? What did we say? What did we say? Hamavdil ben kodesh lekodesh. Between one type of holiness and another type of holiness. Yeah. It's in the Siddur. You didn't think of it? You didn't look inside? Um, uh, okay. You'll, you'll, you'll see. Next time. Yes? Yes. Yeah. Yes, yes. Oh. <laughs> Tov. Yeah, well, we no, own. No, 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 no. <laughs> so you're not hungry. You're not hungry. <laughs> Especially if you had three meals on Shabbat. You have to have a, a, another big meal on, on Motzei Shabbat. Right. Yeah. Some people have chalavi, it's true. But, uh, um, it's hard. It's hard sometimes on your stomach. <laughs> and then you stay up all night. I didn't feel good after the Shabbat. I really didn't feel good. Maybe the... Too heavy. Too heavy, yeah. It's hard, it's hard. It's hard to be so happy. But I up all the night. Yeah, I was up for quite a while, yeah. So, yeah.
Hirsch, how are you? How was your Shavuot? So it was good. So Moshe brought it up because he saw the Israeli doing Avodah Zarah with the That's the simple understanding, yeah. Also, you covered the, what the Isru Hag is? Yes. And then he went, Moshe went back to the mountain that same day or the next day or? So the next day he probably, he had to clean up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They had some business to take care of. Uh, he took, had to take care of cleaning up the uh, the remnants of the golden calf, and uh, there was there was even some people killed. A little bit of a civil war, though. The the people who sinned with the uh, golden calf. I think it says there were five thousand people killed. How many people were killed? I think roughly half a thousand. We should know exactly. We should know exactly. Um, Maybe 3,000? Yeah, maybe 3,000. You're right. Maybe 3,000. Out of 600? That's a lot. What's going on? Oh. And what's that? I didn't get what's going on here. No, somebody asked me. So then Moshe went up again for another 40 days. It's not our Moshe. Nah, the Moshe Rabbeinu. Yeah, we're going back to the time. Our Moshe. Moshe He broke something. <laughs> <laughs> what did he do? And now he killed it on the table. <laughs> 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 when they made the eagle, the yeah. I'm also thinking, when did they start to collect all the gold and to produce it? How many times they needed to make it? It's so a good I question. heard that they went to ask their wives for jewelry, and the wives were, they, they all refused to give them jewelry. So there's a book. Like, oh, you might have heard of the book, and the answers to these questions are in the book. It's called the Torah. Because I was thinking, it's a bestseller. You yeah. read the Chumash. You don't have to go by what what you heard, Ariel. Read the text inside. Uh, that's what I just phrased it like that. Yeah. Because we know the people they are waiting for forty days because they, they, they knew it would take forty days. There is such a tradition. But they forget yeah. the night of the ah, the way they counted. So they, that's right. They, they, they thought maybe he don't come back. Right. So we made this eagle. But yeah. so I was thinking. When did they decide to make the angel? It's on the 40 days? Yeah, yeah. It sounds like they didn't even... On the last day. It, the, the way the Torah describes it, they came to Aaron and they wanted another leader. They thought Moshe was gone. Okay. And then Moshe says, you know, give me so your they, gold. Did they go to Aaron on the day number 40? Um, yeah, I think so. I think that's the way it works, yeah. And Before the day was done. It's possible to melt. <laughs> right away. Let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. We were just celebrated yesterday Shavuot. Such a big revelation. Amazing event. All the Jewish people were prophets. They heard and they saw God. Unbelievable. And then only 40 days later, they're worshipping Avodah Zarah. They're bowing down to a golden calf. Does that make sense? No, 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 no,
when we left uh, Egypt. We go with Moshe and we trust. And then mm -hmm. we start again to complain, oh, why this, why that, bring us back. And also when we have the mana, right. uh, everything we have. But after time, we get used to it. And then we are starting again to complain. Right. This is also when uh, we are waiting for the 40 days when Moshe needs to come back. Uh, in the beginning, you say, it's okay. But 40 days is a long time. So at the end, they, they <laughs> and how long did it take? For the Jewish people to be a people that was worthy of living by the 40 Torah. Years. 40 years. 40 years. 40, I can't 40. The number 40 meaning it's a transition. Yeah. It's a transition period. We have to transform ourselves. And the entire Jewish nation had to transform into a people that can live by the Torah. And so we have 40 years, <laughs> hopefully, in our lives to grow. But we have, uh, we're not starting at zero. We're starting from the Torah that we received. So, uh, let's begin. What do you say? We begin building our lives of Torah the day after Shavuot. Yeah, so right. we don't get to any golden calves. Are you ready? We already have a Torah before That's right. <laughs> even if we didn't already have it, even if we did, um, before Shavuot, we're, we're now motivated to, to solidify ourselves as uh, the Jewish people living by the Torah. Yeah. Okay, the way we're going to do that, by the way, one second, before your question, the way we're going to do that right now, we're starting a new topic. The topic is the Sidur mm -hmm. and how to uh, pray. So we're going to put away these books and everybody grab from behind. Ariel, go, why don't you hand them out? Yeah. Everybody, the Sidurim. And we're, that's a new, our new topic is uh, studying the uh, practice of prayer. Yes, what's your question, Renan? In the meantime, while everybody gets their Sidur out. Right. Festivals. Right. And they happen in the fifteenth. 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 Right. Why? The simple answer is why is Sukkot and Pesach both on the fifteenth of the month? What do you say, Pinchas? Why is Pesach and Shavuot? And Sukkot, both on the 15th. This is the 15th of well, Tishrei. The first? And this is the 15th of Nisan. You tell me why. Yisrael, what do you think? First of the month. Why are the festivals on the 15th of the month? Not the first. That's when it happened. Yeah, but give me one other reason. Another idea. Not just... What's special about the 15th of the month? I have an answer that I figure out. Okay. Close. Close. What? But uh, I figure out when I look up at night and I see the full moon. Exactly. Is that what I just said? You, no. It's not what you no. said. You said no. Birkat Alavana. That's blessing the moon. Ah, yeah. Okay. Basically, what he's saying is just the moon. It's just the moon. The Levana, the moon, the moon, the Yareach, or Levana. It's, there's a cycle and it gets full. The full moon is when you have the most light and you can celebrate. It's the time to celebrate the parties is on the 15th. There's light at night, exactly. And it also represents much more than just practical that you have light on the 15th. Also, it represents a completion, fullness, a, a joy, and you praise Hashem for Hashem took the Jews out of Egypt on the 15th. Not just by accident. He wanted them to have light when they could, uh, walking through the desert. <laughs> they should have a, a nighttime uh, trek. And Sukkot, you're sitting in the Sukkah, and you need to have light. Nowadays we have electricity. <laughs> and flashlights. And but Shabbat. Shabbat. <laughs> yeah, you're supposed to leave a uh, gap between the, the branches. There is, the a, there, there, there is such a custom, right? It's not an obligation, but there is such a custom. Oh, okay. But uh, for sure, they did that. Yeah. Okay. So the Sukkot is 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 the Sukkot the Sidur. We have here nice Sidurim with a commentary and a translation. 
And there are daily prayers, and then there, there, there are the prayers. For example, um, if you look for Havdalah, what you would, what you should get yourself. I'm sure you have a sidur, but if you look for the Havdalah and the sidur, you'll see there's a special Havdalah when, <coughs> when uh, it falls out, when the Yom Tov falls out on Motzei Shabbat. It says here, if you look on um, right, the regular have the last on page 782. You can see the Havdala, that's after Shabbat, on a regular, on a regular day. On regular Shabbat. The end, towards the uh, the end of the page, blessed are you, Lord, who distinguishes between sacred and secular. Hamavdil ben kodesh lechol. Okay, now, if you look on page 800, right, we're comparing, I'll just put it on the board. Page 782 is the Havdalah, the regular Havdalah. And now we're looking at 8. 22. There's a special paragraph for Havdalah when it's also the festival. And you could see it ends, the last line, on the, the, it's the middle paragraph on page 822 in the Siddur. It says, Blessed are you, Lord, who distinguishes between the sacred and the sacred, it's ben mavdil ben kodesh la kodesh. So there's your havdalah, okay, for when it's a yom tov. It's part of the kiddush. You understand, Pinchas? This is the kiddush, as you can see on page eight hundred and twenty, the page before. This is the kiddush for the festival, and it includes the havdalah. <laughs> Yes, you separated, divided. There's a difference between the holiness of Shabbat and the holiness of Yom Tov. What do you think it is? It's very interesting. They're both holy days. How is the holiness of Shabbat different from the holiness of Yom Tov? How, how is it different? Right. We say, who separates between the holy and the holy. The sacred and the sacred. You have distinguished... You have made a distinction, right? You see on page 822? See where I'm reading in the middle of the page? You, so you've made a distinction between the holiness of the Shabbat and the holiness of the festivals. What's the difference between the holiness of the Shabbat? The well, there's of the um, different sacrifices you give, right? Good, different sacrifices. What else? Um, there's the frequency. Doesn't happen as often, true. What else? The light you can, you can carry fire into fire. That's right. There's some rules that are different. There's some laws that are different in the types of work you're allowed to do. That's right. But what does a different type of holiness mean? Shabbat Shabbaton is Yom Kippur. But what, what is the holiness of the festivals different? They're both holy. So if you look at the uh, top of the page on 822, in line number 5 or 6, it says, Baruch Ata Hashem. Mekadesh Israel Vazmanim. You see over here? 823, 822, and 823. Mekadesh Israel Vazmanim. What do we say on Shabbat? The Kiddush for Shabbat. Mekadesh Shabbat. You should know that, right? So Mekadesh Shabbat. You sanctify the Shabbat. And here it should say Mekadesh Hazmanim. Festival, but it says Israel and Right, why does it say Israel on the this festivals? Is a festival uh, gathering to, to your shalim. Not exactly. Okay. I mean, uh, what, is Shabbat not for Israel? Shabbat is also no, for the Jewish people. It's not, it's not people gathering for Shabbat. It's, not like it's true, but Israel doesn't mean gathering. It's just the fe- it means the, the, the festivals. It doesn't say that Israel are gathering. Right. So the it's interesting that Shabbat... Who decides when Shabbat is? 
Hashem. Hashem, right? Hashem made the week as He created the world seven days. So we, we celebrate every seventh day. And it's, uh, we don't have any part in the decision. Who, sell, who decides when is the festival? Hashem. Hashem, but what did He tell us? He told us to do Sukkot on the 15th of Tishrei and do Pesach on the 15th of Nisan. Right? The 15th. When is the 15th? Who decides when the 15th is? That's right. Yeah. We said before that before there was a set calendar, the Beit Din in Yerushalayim had to take testimony, receive the testimony, and declare this is day one of the new month. And then it follows that's day two, day three. If they don't declare day one, there will never be a day 15. So who makes the festivals? The Jewish people. Who makes Shabbat? Hashem. Hashem makes Shabbat, and the Jewish people, well, of course, because God commanded us to, but we are a very important instrument. Like direct actors. Like we're the actors. That's right. We're the actors. We create the festivals. So when we say God sanctified the festivals, we say God sanctified Israel and the festivals. Maybe that's a little bit of a different type of sacredness of holiness, sanctity between the festivals and Shabbat. Shabbat is just set by God and the festivals are made holy by the Jewish people. Of course the Jewish people are celebrating as Ariel said, the Jewish people have to go up to, to, to Jerusalem. But the very creation of the festival itself was, was through the, the Jewish people, through the Beit Din, who declared, when is the festival going to come? And we, Ravid mentioned before that in Chutzlars they didn't know when it was, and so they, they had the custom to add a second day, because this was, a, it was live, it was dynamic. This is a different type of holiness. Holiness which is through the Jewish people, very connected to the Jewish people and how the Beit Din acts, and a holiness which is directly from Shemaim, every seven days, rain or shine, every seven days is Shabbat. Whether the Jewish people are sitting in Beit Din or not, the yeah. Jewish people are in the land of Israel, outside the land of Israel, it's every um, seventh day. They don't, it doesn't this rely is, on the Beit Din. It like doesn't rely on the Beit Din, right. correct, correct. So we don't say Mekadesh Yisrael Shabbat. we just say Mekadesh Shabbat. Whereas by Yom Tov we say Mekadesh Yisrael Azmini. So that's why maybe what we say, that there's a different type of, of a holiness. I want to add one more thing. It's a beautiful idea. I heard from Rabbi Soloveitchik. Uh, he says, every Shabbat, we welcome, you might have heard this, the Shabbat queen into our homes. This is why we sing the Lechadodi. Lechadodi, you know this idea. So, what's the Shabbat queen? It's a form of, of, of holiness. It's a form of Hashem. Hashem comes into your home. The Shekhinah, the Divine Presence. You welcome, every Shabbat you welcome Him, of course in Beit Knesset, but also into your home. Right? Hashem comes to visit us once a week. It's beautiful. What happens on the festival? Does Hashem come to visit us on the festivals? We light the candles in some way, but Ariel, where are we in the festivals? We, we went to the shrine. We're in Yerushalayim. Salvechik said, on the festivals, we go visit Hashem's house. On Shabbat, Hashem visit our home. And on Yom Tov, we visit His home. It's like, you know, you play sports. Sometimes you play from one, one country to another country. Sometimes the game is in... Uh, oh, a home game, and sometimes it's an away game, right? Yeah. It's a game. Yeah. <laughs> so, some, so Shavuot, Pesach, and Sukkot, the three festivals, it's a different type of holiness. It's not that we're welcoming Hashem into our homes. We leave our regular lives. We go to Jerusalem, and we have closeness to Hashem. That's what makes it holy. The holiness is the closeness to Hashem. But it's of a different kind.
we go into Hashem's house, we go to the Beit HaMikdash, and we experience closeness to Him there. And we also, when like on Shabbat, our home is at that moment the home of Hashem. It's like a little temple, that's right, that's right. We talk about to Allah. Of course. We do every of course. Time we need right. To do. So it's his home. We we show him to be thankful. And right. Uh, right. Right. But it's also but like when we have the kippah, it's like the ring of the marriage. We, ah. We, we show to, 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 uh, That's right. We wear the mark that we are we are God's people. Yafe. That's why it's so special when the Yom Tov comes right after Shabbat. Yeah. We have Shabbat holiness, and then we have Yom Tov holiness. We have a mitzvah to do havdalah, separate. Yeah. Well, so we say hamavdil ben kodesh le kodesh. There's a havdalah between different types of holiness. You're right, Ariel. There's difference halachically. You can hear you're allowed to cook. Shabbat, you're not allowed to cook. Here we can transfer fire. Shabbat, we don't touch the fire. But that's an expression of an internal meaning, what a type of holiness is. There's a distinction between yeah. the different types of holiness. It's hard to define. It's, uh, but this was a nice explanation, yeah. It's, uh, Shabbat is also said in the same place in the, in the Torah uh, with the Muadim. True, so it's, that's it's, right. It's Shabbat, it's like the one kind of Muadim. Yafem Ha'od, Yafem Ha'od. In Parashat Emor, in chapter 23 of Vayikra, it has a list of all the festivals, and the first one mentioned is Shabbat. Shabbat. Very strange. Mm -hmm. Shabbat's not a festival, it's of a different kind. No. So, uh, yeah. For me, Shabbat is a festival. <laughs> <laughs> it has an element of being festival. What, what is a Mo'ed? The word for festivals in the Torah is Mo'ed. It's an appointed time. It's an appointed time. Very good, an appointed time. The shon va'a, the place where we, we, we gather or uh, we, we, uh, meet. we meet, right? So Shabbat also, other than being the day God created the world and the day we rest, it also has an element of mo'ed, the day which we gather to, to pray in shul and to, to mark, to, uh, it's a set time, mm -hmm. right? That's why it says, it also has a special timing to it. And so it's also called the Mu'ed. But apparently there's a difference. That's what we said in the Havdalah. Difference between Shabbat and Yom Tov. The difference between... Did you say Havdalah last night? Last night did you say Havdalah? Yes. A little bit different, no? Yes. Then we said, Avdil ben Kodesh, Lechol. Today's Chol. I know it's Isru Chag. <laughs> and I know it's the six days after Shavuot. And there's a little bit of festivity, but for the main part, especially if you're not a teacher, it's a regular day. <laughs> it's chol. It's mundane. And so we say, Hamavdil ben Kodesh lechol. Of course, last night, what, what was Havdalah different than a regular Motzei Shabbat? We got burned the, the candle. No candle. Mm -hmm. And? Uh, regular Havdalah has a candle, and what else? The spices. Besamim we had? Besamim, there was no besamim either. No candle and no besamim. Only Bore Priya yes. and the Brachav Hamavdil bin Kodesh Lachol. We know the Hosher by Israel, we know Shishim Azeb, Hosher by Israel, we know Hamavdil bin Kodesh Lachol. You said the, for the one. Uh, yeah, you need to do the Yafe. Yafe. So uh, we can see that there's a lot in this book. <laughs> If you don't know what to do, read the Siddur. Siddur has, for every day, the Kiddush for the festival, and it has the special Havdalah between Shabbat and the festival, and even tells you that before that. Um, does it tell you about lighting the candle? No, it doesn't. It should have, yeah. Uh, the Rambam said that Isu Hag is not one of the days that uh, the Hanun is made, right? I don't know. No? I don't know. It's interesting. I don't recall specifically what the Rambam know? has to say about Isu Hag. No. What's your Rambam? Oh. <laughs> I didn't pray hard enough. We just said earlier, uh, even Moshe Rabbeinu couldn't remember everything. Moshe Rabbeinu didn't remember everything. 
Hashem said, I'm going to give it to you as a gift. I, I guess I didn't get the gift <laughs> as much as Moshe Rabbeinu. I thought you knew everything except for like all the pages of Tabu that you're still working on. But everything else you know. <laughs> Maybe this was on the one page that I missed. <laughs> I wasn't there that day. <laughs> anyway. So we're going to be learning about the Sidur, and we'll, we'll continue with Zed Hashem tomorrow. It's only 1,320 pages. We could, it should take us a week or two. So. Yeah.